Okay, good evening everyone. Um, let's see if this works. So, yes. Okay, it works. Perfect. I can hear myself, so you should be able to hear me too. Good evening and welcome to my 51st, 51st, 51st live stream, I guess. Today's moderator is going to be Kshaku. Uh, you can see his nickname right here. And well, he's going to take your questions. So basically, if you have any questions which you would like to ask me, you basically just have to tell Kshaku and he will let me know using his magical powers. Or if you're on IRC, then just um, you can write exclamation mark Q and then the question and that also reaches me. Cool, so today's topic is going to be mm, genetic programming or actually like baby steps in genetic programming. I'm going to explain what's that in a second, but well, we already talked about genetic algorithms on my live stream, for example, when discussing the modern fuzzing techniques uh, a couple of, well, episodes ago. Well, quite a lot of episodes ago, actually. Um, so today I'm actually going to use a tablet and a pen instead of a mouse to do the drawings on screen. That might mean a couple of things. First, you will see that the mouse wasn't really the problem. My handwriting is just horrible. And second, expect, expect problems, basically. But um, yeah, uh, a lot of people told me that I probably should start doing that. Cool. So um, as you know, I am publishing video logs, vlogs, basically. I published three already, they're on my channel. I'm trying to publish them at least two a week, as in one Monday, then there are the two live streams. Uh, well, if you speak Polish, there are two live streams in the middle of a week. And Friday, there's another uh, video log. All the video logs so far have been in English and I'm for the time being going to keep that. And uh, if there will be a week where there is no live stream, like the next week, I will publish either three vlogs instead of two or four, depending on how many I have actually recorded. Cool. So yes, uh, I guess that brings us to announcement. Uh, no live stream next week. Sorry, I'm actually in, in Germany on um, Technische Schule, Technische Hochschule uh, in Golstadt with a lecture, so yeah, so I won't be able to do the live stream. Um, apart from that, yeah, in two weeks the live stream will be like normal. Oh yeah, um, I don't have a mission for you folks today, sorry. Cool, um, I guess let's go to the desktop and see what's there. If there are any questions, by the way, this is a right time to ask them because I am going to continue doing what I've done in my previous live streams and the previous couple of live streams as in I'm going to answer questions not related to the topic of a stream at the beginning and the end of a stream and everything in the middle I will either uh, well I will answer questions related to the topic of the live stream cool so um, what am I looking for the browser because I need to show you my moderator's website, which is dev.kshaku.cc and uh, he writes about C++ and some other stuff and there is a very important blog post dated 1st of April 
which I found quite funny, so you should check it out. It, it's really fun. Um, cool. And yeah, and that's it, I think. I think we can get going with um, with questions and then with the topic of livestream. So there is um, one question so far. Oh, you, you should see the question there in a second. Cool. Mm. Is it worth investing time in the Linux from scratch project? In the sense, will it be useful in the future in the context of hacking? That's actually a good question. Um, in all honesty, it's on my to-do list, like do something like this at least once in your life. Mm, and I see it as a learning opportunity. So um, yeah, I would give it, a go, give it a go just to understand better how how linux works or maybe even try to go a level beyond that like because linux from scratch if i remember correctly there's still a lot of scripts around it which automate a lot of stuff but maybe just take like the linux kernel and try to build a system system around it yourself without actually relying on any scripts and uh, that might be fun as well though i guess even more difficult than, than linux from scratch but i would actually I would actually um, try, because why not? Did you study computer science or a similar field? I studied uh, computer science um, specializing in mathematical computer science. And, um, and yeah, but that was just a bachelor's degree. I did go for master's, but after a year I decided that perhaps um, in, in my case, it would be better to just focus on my research instead of uh, instead of continuing the master's degree, which turned out in my case, again, in my case was a really good decision, but you know, your mileage may vary. Okay, I guess that's about it uh, for questions. At least I don't see any more. So we can get to the topic of um, of today's uh, live stream which is going to be again genetic programming whatever but is so um by the way if you have a question then you need to prepend the question with kshakuznik on uh, irc or youtube otherwise i might not get it um cool so mm, yes uh, what what is this about well uh, in general, the idea is that I'm going to write a program which will write a program, mm, but it will... I actually won't tell the program what to write. I will tell the program what is the input, and I will grade the program on what it produces. I will tell the program, okay, it worked, or no, whatever you created, it didn't really work. And um, I was actually looking for a proper, a good function to make my program to write. And uh, I have a couple of ideas, but uh, I guess mm, I'm going for memcopy, which is like copying memory from one place to another. And I will try to, try to incorporate grading based on how many cycles does it take uh, after I already, well, after apart from actually getting it like it doesn't crash and, and some other stuff, but we'll get the light there later. So yeah, memcopy. And I'm also thinking of something um, like mathematical, like actually, for example, just you have these this bunch of numbers, add them together, and then grading the program based on whether the program gives me a successful result. But this isn't really, this might not be, um, not be feasible for a couple of reasons I'm going to explain in a second. Um, <laughs> but first, a good question. Is the DNA animation somehow connected to genetic programming? Uh, in some way, maybe, yes, actually. Um, so I'm not going to say no. Now, how the whole process is going to work is like this. I will, mm, well, this will be done basically in, in machine code, which is x86, uh, not even assembly, but machine code, so bytecode, right? So I will create a program which will, at the beginning, it will have a certain array of bytes and there will be like, um, yeah, I, I'm just going to write hexadecimal placeholders. Yes, this is my handwriting. It's terrible, isn't it? Okay, and it will have a byte string of some, some length. Now, mm, 
then there will come the phase where I basically say, okay, now I'm going to do random mutations. I will basically take this string, uh, which I will call, I guess, like the at the beginning, like the best um, the best specimen. And I will do random mutations as in I will copy it. And I will, for example, in one version, I will uh, change uh, AA to AB and then the rest will be the same. In another version, I will actually like keep the AA intact, but I will do like mutate B, BB into like B1, for example, right? And keep the rest the same. And after I have quite a lot of such mutations, like for example, well, 1000, but let's see what the speed will be actually of this, but let's assume 1000. I will run, uh, I will, uh, well, do another sort of mutation where actually I will start combining them. I am not yet sure in what order I will do it, but uh, it, it might be like the order I described, it might be um, a little different, we'll see about it. But uh, I will start mixing them. So like, for example, I will mix this one and this one as in I will take like the AB from this one, but B1 from the other and the rest uh, like, you know, in, in some random order probably. And this will give me, let's say 2000 specimen, specimen, right? And now I'm going to grade them. And the grading is going to be done in, in a way that I will execute this machine code in an emulator, which is called Unicorn. Unicorn is basically a QEMU-based um, emulator, which is really nicely scriptable in, uh, in Python. So that will help me a lot. I actually thought about running this code on my machine, but that would require a sandbox because if there wouldn't be a sandbox, it would, be, it would basically just kill my machine or like remove random files. Uh, because that's, that's, you know, it's basically random code at this moment, right? So yeah, I will run uh, this in an emulator mm, and I will check what happened as in try to grade the result based on a couple of things. Um, one of the things might be how many instructions did execute because um, if just one instruction executed uh, versus like five instructions ex executed without raising an exception, then I might prefer the five because they're more meaningful. Uh, they probably don't do what they should do, but at least they don't crash. So that might be one, um, one factor in grading. Another factor in grading might be, did they actually copy some memory? Um, I'm probably going to take some input block and then an output block and ask the code to copy the memory from here to here. And if uh, mm, the memory is uh, copied, you know, at least one byte got copied or one bit got copied or whatever, I'm probably going to grade it on byte level, maybe on bit level, then I will add it to the points. Like for example, how many um, bytes were successfully copied. And it might turn out that for example, um, this code which didn't copy any bytes and immediately crashed, this code for some reason copied like one byte and uh, this code copied zero bytes, but actually didn't crash, right? So, and then I'm going to make a ranking of, uh, of the, uh, the specimen, right? And I'm going to pick the best one, which is going to be like, I don't know, like this one, for example, in this case, right? It will go to the top of the ranking. And I'm going probably to take like 10 specimen, maybe, but for the sake of our example, I'm going to assume one specimen and I'm going to repeat the process, but this time I will use the best specimen here instead of whatever random string I had here at the beginning. So this is what I'm going to implement today. I don't know if it's going to work. It might fail like miserably, but um, I'm quite curious. And this is something I actually wanted to try out for, for a long time. So yeah, I'm going to, to see if it works. And it's actually might be a little um, complicated because the problem here we are facing is that, um, let me maybe restart this, is that, uh, let's assume that this is how good the program is. Um, so here the, the y axis is like how good. And here is, um, let's call it time. I'm going to naively assume that it's actually going to get better over time which might not be the case. And uh, there is a boundary somewhere where some 
mem copy is going to happen. And before we reach that boundary, there's going to like, and it might not be linear. I'm, I'm drawing a linear, um, well, you know, line here. It might not be linear. This will do not do any copying at all. And then we'll reach the boundary and probably it will get really, really good, really fast. But before we reach that boundary, mm, not really. So yeah, let's see how it works. Now, um, I see there are some more questions. So let's, uh, <laughs> I I'll go quickly through them. Uh, what does my t-shirt say? My t-shirt says, oh, sorry, I'm actually tangled with my cables so I cannot show you. Okay, so yeah, it says uh, this thing. There are only two hard things in computer science, uh, cache and validation, naming things, asynchronous callbacks and off by one errors, which is a you know, common joke, especially in security. Mm. And that's what you're going to do today. Uh, consider reflection. So, I'm I'm not really sure what you mean. If you mean the reflection as in like C plus plus reflection or Java reflection, but not really because I'm operating on machine level. But if you mean something else, just let me know. Um, did you get ten percent more RAM uh, for for hiring? Hmm. I don't I I don't get the joke. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, one one last question. You're going to use a set of example data or only one in out sample? I need to decide this, but I will probably use, I will probably have at least like a configurable amount of specimen. I think about 10, maybe 10. The, everything depends actually on how fast will the emulation go. How long will it take to evaluate one single block of code. If it will be like super fast, then that's great. Then we can use uh, higher numbers, right? Higher numbers of specimen, higher numbers of um, of tests, right? But if we, yeah, if it's slow, then we'll see how it goes. And again, as I did mention, I'm going to use Python and I'm going to use Unicorn, which is a really cool and really easy to use emulator, which also supports x86. I guess I'm going to go with 32-bit. Yeah, I'm going to go with 32-bit uh, x86, 32-bit because the instruction format is a little simpler. Though in all honesty, I should go with something super simple. Like if that would be assembly 8051, I'm like sure we would get mem copy at some point, but that might not be the case for, for x86, but okay, let's see what happens. Hmm. Yeah, and the, the interesting part here is that I'm not really sure what kind of a code, what kind of code will will get generated. As in, um, I know how I would write memcopy in assembly, and I'm pretty sure if we get to a to a program which works, it will look nothing like what I have in mind. Because yeah, it will like probably work by accident by some side effects, as I know how this algorithm works. Cool. Um, so from unicorn import, I'm first going to start with actually creating the function with which runs the code. So this is one thing and the second thing is I need x86 uh, const. You can download unicorn if you type in Google or whatever um, search engine you're using, unicorn engine. And yeah. And uh, actually, there's a website, which is unicorn-engine.org. I guess I can give you folks a link on our chats. So let me do just that. And uh, in the download section, if you're on Windows or Linux, uh, especially if you're on Windows, that's quite easy to, um, to, get, to get. On Linux, it might be a little more tricky, but I found it that is rather easy to install. So I'm just going to go into details how to install this. I trust you folks actually can install a library. So uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I guess I'm going to code it, uh, call it grade function, whatever. And it will get the bytecode, which is actually machine code, but let's just call it, 
code. Let's call it code because why not? Now, I do not want to create the emulator each time. What I want is I actually want to be able to, um, well, just have an emulator. And yeah, so I'm going to create it here. UC, UC is the name of a, of a unicorn class. Now I need to do what's the architecture and what's x86 and what's the mode and the mode is going to be 32 bit as I mentioned. Now here I will actually need to create, oh by the way I will make the font a little larger so you folks can see. Uh, if you have problems on YouTube with a link, just uh, copy the link and remove the invisible character which is at the end and it should start working for you. I actually filed the bug for that finally, so yeah. Uh, okay. Now, what's the environment in which I'm testing? Because I will need some page in memory, which is... Uh, I will create three pages in memory, right? Uh, three regions in memory. I will create a region which is... Uh, which is uh, only readable, and I will put the input tests here. Then I will create one which is executable and readable, and I will put the specimen here always. And then I will create a writable one where I will expect the results to be copied to. So, so yeah, the idea will be that something, well, the code will copy this from here to here. Now, um, I will need to, well, this, this won't be writable, so the code won't destroy it, but the code will destroy this, so I will have to probably clear this amount, this region of memory uh, each time. So yeah, uh, only three pieces of memory, I guess, no, I lied to you. There will al also be the stack. I will also create a stack which will be a separate one. I could go without any stack, but I actually do want the program to be able to use the stack, because why not, right? Cool, so uh, let's do uc mem map and now the address where I want to map it. Let's assume that uh, this address will be, it doesn't have to be a high address, like this address is going to be the um, read-only memory, I guess. So, you know what, I'm going to make constants for it. Uh, input memory, and yeah. Then I will have input, well, mem input memory, perfect, that's redundant. Output is going to be at this, then the code is going to be at this, and the stack is going to be at this address. Perfect. Okay. Now I can, I guess, uh, do this. Input how much? I'm going to allocate only one page worth of memory, which is four kilobytes. Uh, sorry. So that isn't really true, right? It's uh, usually four kilobytes, but yeah, yeah, let's assume that one page is four kilobytes for the sake of this discussion. Um, yeah, four kilobytes, perfect. And uh, now the protection. I want this to be read-only. I don't remember the constants, so I'm going to actually run Python and, uh, and I'm going to check what was the constant name from unicorn dot x86 consts uh, import everything and from this import everything and I do remember that there was the prot like from protection prot p r o t q word there so it's in global somewhere here um, but this doesn't help me a lot so I will do this I guess um, x for x in globals dot keys because I only care about the keys in globals if prod in x okay now we're getting somewhere so where is the hook okay so it's uh, uc prod read for example this one and that's uh, that's perfect for me so let's do uc underscore and here we go I guess UC prod all will be seven. Yeah, so this is just, you know, a bit mask. Uh, there's a question, do you use Vim style in Sublime 3? No, no, uh, I don't. 
Mm, I did see that it exists, but I didn't try it out. No reason, actually. Okay, the input will be read-only, so this constant. Now, mm, the output will be readable and writable, but not executable. Plot right. The code will be readable and executable, but not writable. And the stack will be actually like same like output output actually. Perfect. Now, for the stack actually to work, we need the stack pointer around there because we cannot make the machine actually guess that it's there. We should actually just put it there. I am thinking about don't think about no maybe no um reg right and what's the I'm going to again look for RSP you know ESP because I'm in 32 bit this is the name of uh, of a constant to use for ESP it's actually 30 so it's not easily guessable what the value of the constant is and I want to write there where the stack is plus um, in the middle and I want to place it in the middle of a stack so if a push happens it will not crash if a pop happens it will not crash because it will have space on both sides of a stack and yes uh, 800 is the middle of a page if you actually calculate it is like two kilobytes so two kilobytes into the page then uh, i am assuming that the starting point for my code is going to be somewhere but th this is actually um i need to reset the register values anyway so I'll do it here because I need to re reset all the registers. Most of the res uh, sorry, most of the registers will be set to zero though. So let's maybe copy this. But not all the registers actually. Um, yeah, perfect. Programming by copy paste. That's my next book. EBP. That's totally not in order. EAX, EBX, ESI. EDI, I, hmm, I'm missing something <laughs> like EDX and ECX, obviously. And EIP, which is uh, yeah, quite important. Let's make alphabetical order. Alph alphabetical order isn't really the order of how these registers go, but that doesn't matter. And EIP, and I'm going to set the EIP to well, just mem code, right? Because it, the code will begin at the, with the beginning of uh, that memory. Now, I will assume, I will make it easy for the code. I will tell it that the address of the input memory is actually ESI. So um, this is mem in where the, you know, the test case is and the EDI will be where the output is. Okay. And ECX, so I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm not super sure about this, right? Because there is an instruction in x86, which will actually, which will, I'm not using the word actually, aren't I? Anyway, um, the problem here is that there's an instruction in x86, which would copy from ECI to EDI, and but let's start with it. And here I will put the length of a test. So, um, you know what I'm going to do? A little, it's a little different. I'm going to get like the input address here, address input, address output. Well, address output will always be the same, but count. Mm, cool. So count is going here, address input is going here. And I think I have my registers set. Now I did say that I need to reset the output memory and the stack memory. Um, so hmm. yeah, this is a little micro optimization, but I will do it anyway. Um, zero page. Okay. So I will mem write right into memory at the address of uh, output. This is a zero page basically, and I will do the same with stack. 
And now I have the memory reset. I need to copy the code into, so memwrite into the code. I need to put the code which I'm receiving. And my guess that's it. I can actually start the execution from here. So, hmm. yeah. And I'm going to let it execute for, hmm. Mm, but actually depends on count, doesn't it, right? Because if count is like 1000, then I should let it execute for at least 1000 instructions, probably more. But, uh, yeah, mm, mm. actually, was how do you execute it anyway? I think there was something like mu.start. Yeah, and uh, let me do help on it so I remember the parameter first. Why, why, why did it execute? This, this is actually from my start script from, well, that means that help actually executes a Python process, which is weird, but okay. Anyway, yeah, I will tell it to run count times uh, 10 instructions, I guess, because why not? I do not have to set this here, by the way, I can skip it because I need to put it in the emu start anyway. So you see emu start, then begin of a code, which is mem code. Uh, it's good that I made this constants actually. Until zero, I don't care. I mean, just crash or return. That would be actually cool if it would return to zero, but no, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, let's leave it here. I, I'm thinking of actually putting on the stack a uh, return address. I will do that. So on the stack, I know that ESP is set to this value. Oh, I'm sorry. That means ESP is always pointing at the, at the last thing it put on the stack. That's not true for ar all architectures, but in x86, that is true. So I'm going to put some funny address here, which is for one, for one, for one, for one. And for one, for one, for one, for one is going to be my, um, like uh, the until address. So if uh, the emulator gets here, that means that, yeah, uh, we're, we're done, basically. Then timeout is going to be zero, but count, as I said, I'm, that's, that's ridiculous. How does it work? Can I just, yeah, that should be fine, actually. Because there is like the same name here. I'm not fully sure what will happen here, but according to Python grammar, I hope the right thing. Otherwise, I, I'm changing this to size and I'm, no, I'm curious to, to see what, what's going to happen. Um, I will so regret this decision, won't I? Now let's change it and we can try it later on. Just size, size, count, whatever. Um, yeah, that's fine. Size times, uh, yeah, five, maybe let's do five. Okay, and this will just start execution. I will need some try catch later on here, but uh, that's fine. And let's see if this uh, if this works. So I'm going to tell it, um, please grade the following code. And the following code is going to be just a knob, was like do nothing, and um, and return C3. Yeah, and that's it. And let's see what what happens actually. Cool, so Python, go, py, and great, there are three arguments, I gave it only two, address in, mem, input, and size one, because I don't care. Uh, blah, 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 lem data, what did I do? Wait, what? Address in, this is code, right? Mm, this is fine, zero page, oh, no, this isn't fine. It should be a string. Yeah. Uh, okay, invalid memory fetch. Why is this an invalid memory fetch? Okay, so it did crash. Now, mm, let me do a try accept here. I it will crash a lot and I don't care. 
when you current the TUC SE, I want to just know about it. And what I what else I want to know about is probably like where did it crash? So reg read ucx86 eip as hexadecimal. That's fine. And it crashed at the beginning. Now um, I'm actually going to include the disassembler library as well. It's going to do I have capstone here? I hope I do. Um, from capstone import all. I do, perfect. So I'm going to create a disassembler somewhere here as well. Maybe here, CS. Uh, well, you basically use the libraries in an identical way. They are from the same author who was nice enough to actually make them usable in the same way. Cool. And now let's print one instruction here from this address. That's uh, for mm, instruction in cs dot this asm now the code which we get from memory so you see mem read and wherever uh, we are at the eip let me maybe do something like this eip and i'm going to read 16 bytes because why not and then no there is a reason why 16 bytes i'm going to read 16 bytes because i care only about one instruction and in the 32-bit mode of x86 you cannot have instructions larger than 16 bytes uh, otherwise the processor will actually throw um, an exception and this is something which what the old days virtual machines got wrong and you could detect that your code is virtualized that way but that was uh, yeah mm. yeah all right so this is good now I'm actually going to go with this. My mistake is probably easy, but I'm, I do want to write this, uh, the back code right now and because I will need it later anyhow. So yeah, bear with me. Ins um, mnemonic and ins uh, op str. str. No, I want to run it. Uh, syntax error because I knew I ate this somewhere. Okay, invalid fetch, blah blah blah. Here, what do you mean I cannot fetch by memory because my EIP is not set correctly? What do you mean my, mem my, my EIP is not set correctly? I'm pretty sure my EIP is set correctly. What is my EIP set to then? Mm, no, it. What? Why doesn't it print anything? Oh, because I. Uh, yeah, sorry, my bad. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, so I actually. My code works correctly. We reach the proper address. Now, the reason is. The question is actually why. Why didn't it stop here? But as. In all honesty, as long as it's this address, I don't care, that's fine. That means we actually get points for ending at the right address, so that is correct. Uh, if EIP is not equal to this magical address, I should create this as a constant, right? So let's do it. Uh, magical, magic address, magic red, maybe. Okay. And let's put it here. And yeah, if it's not the magic address, then I want everything which I've written here. So yeah, cool. Otherwise, yeah, just return. Perfect. That's good. And I'm going to add an CC here. CC is actually in free. So yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot a break here. Sorry, my bad. Uh, break because I want just one instruction. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Mm. Okay, so Foxtrot says that for installing Unicorn, the uh, VN and PIP works fine, I guess. So that's good. That's good to hear. Um, so Lukas writes, I assume you are trying to optimize the vector of assembly instructions this way. Won't it be better 
to use some hill climbing algorithm um, uh, example simulated annealing instead of genetics it might be but i uh, as again as i said at the beginning of the stream this is something i wanted to try and i'm not doing it because it's the proper way to do it the best way to do it i'm doing it because i wanted to try and see what what happens actually if i actually get the correct result mm. cool now Okay, so the grading function executes the code, which is good. Now we do need to grade, like grade, because it's supposed to grade, right? So how good is the function result? Let's call the result, maybe score is a little better. And everyone begins with a score zero. Now, and I'm actually going to return the score here. If we reached the correct address, so else, the score is going to increase by by how much? Um, 100. Uh, because let's assume we always prefer code which uh, which doesn't crash. Let's assume just for the sake of assumption. Let's also assume that we are going to give it one point for each instruction it executes. And to do that, I am going to need to, mm, to create, no, because I would have to create an instruction hack, hook, instruction hook. If I would create an instruction hook, I would get a callback for each instruction which is executed, but they, that actually slows things a lot. So my question would be, can I get from Unicode the information, oh, Unicode, Unicorn, the information how yeah, I'm like how much how many instructions were actually executed? Uh, let's see what do we have here. Uh, context restore, context save, context update. I didn't know it has this function. Query. I don't know what query does. Release handle. Mm, not probably no. Well, okay, then no points for that. Um, though I will need to add, I guess, one point for each byte which actually was properly copied. Um, so yeah, let's do, do just that. I'm going to get the in memory, so mem in, which uh, I guess I know. No, I don't know. I need to get it. I don't like that I need to get it. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to get it because that will slow down things. Uh, let's call it test. Let's uh, instead of size. Yeah, let's call it test. Now address in is going to be always mem input, and the size is going to be the length of test. And I will personally write this into the proper memory. So, man, input, write the test, and uh, yeah, that's it. There might be garbage after test though, so I'm going to also do zero page and grab minus size bytes, I guess. This should get me, uh, no, 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 this, this should get me the filling to fill it out uh, properly. Let's, uh, let's, let me just test it quickly. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. Now I'm assuming that uh, I'm going to copy two bytes, so minus two, and it gets the filling perfect. That's perfect. It's just the padding basically to fill to the whole page. Okay, um, so I now don't need to read it because it's actually called test. Uh, here, by the way, no, it's fine. I have that. There. I do need to get uh, the output memory though. So after executing the code, I'm reading back the memory. Mem read from output. And how much memory do I need? I care. I, uh, how, how much memory do I care about? That's the question. Well, because I zero it, 
It actually should copy at most. Mm. Yeah, let's do that like that. It will have to copy at most. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering if I should check the padding actually. Let's assume I want to check the padding as well. So, you know what? I'm going to do this. Okay. Uh, now I need to read, like, the f I can do line of text here. And I want to calculate what's the difference of them as in how many bytes differ or bits differ. I said I'm going to go for bytes, right? So yeah, let's, let's just check how many bytes differ. Is there an easy way to do it? I don't remember in all honesty. Let's, let's assume, yeah, let's just do like 4x, y, and mm, zip the output and input, sorry, the test. And this actually returns a byte array, but but my test here is going to need to be a string. So it would be best if the test at some point, mm, no, 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 the memo out. I'm going to change the memo out to a string. Okay, so I get the types right. And here, uh, if uh, x equals y, then increase the score by one. I'm not sure this will be enough, but let's see. Let's see what happens. Actually, I think the grading function is now correct. Let's run the code. Well, not really correct, but not bad either. So I'm going to copy now these four, and it says that the score is this because that's actually that's actually just one thousand. Wait, why? No, that doesn't. Look I'm pretty sure it didn't copy the AAA. Oh, right, because it's 4096. So I got perfect score for the padding, but I didn't get perfect score for, yeah, that's fine, I think. I could give it more points for the data and less for the padding, but we will get to that later on. Apart from that, it seems to return a value, which is already good. And uh, I have this, so let's me, let me try it this and here I get more points because it didn't crash. That is perfect. I'm not going to display the information, this information right now. I'm just going to pass it because I don't care about really that it crashes. And we can get to the genetic part I guess. Cool. So yeah. The genetic part, how do we get about that? Uh, let's... Um, is there like some sort of a... I'm thinking if there is a proper structure I should use in Python. I'm going to just brute force it at the beginning and maybe think about optimizations later on. So I totally need like a random function. Random. Okay. And I need to create the initial set of uh, specimens, right? So uh, I just do a class like. Yeah. Need. I don't know if it's going to be like code. And the code is going to be a byte array. Yeah, it's going to be a byte array. Initially, it can be empty, I don't care. Now, at the beginning, I will randomize it. So let's assume here, but I will give it some initial state. And by default, it's going to be none. Now, this is going to be initial state. But if it's none, let's do it maybe like this. If initial state is none, then just do it fully random. Mm, sorry. How do you get, I don't remember how to use random. You use not choice. 
just run them, I think. Mm, no. no, it just gives me a value, so that's not it. Get random bits, I think that's it. That's not, that's not the form I would like to get. No, seriously. I'm pretty sure there is a function which does it. Random bytes. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's not front end. I want, uh, I want bytes, random bytes, not random. Yeah, or as you run, but what I was looking for. Just mix the libraries. For, yeah, perfect. Now it gets me random bytes. So now, OS and the end. And how, what will be the size of this code at the beginning? I'm going to go with code which is 32 bytes, I'm probably going to... Yeah, let's, let's just start with this, because why not? And now... Mm, top specimens is going to be equal to... Mm, spec for x and for whatever and range. How many I want at the beginning, so... How many... Mm, top like number of top is going to be 64, 10. I said 10, right? At the beginning, so no top, but top count maybe. Okay, and now I got top specimen, which are pretty random. So I can grade them and they will fail miserably. So, but before I even grade them, I will I want to mutate them. So yeah, the algorithm is going to look like this. While I'm not bored, so while true, I probably should save the state, but I will get to that later on. Mm. Uh, so Dex writes, uh, uh, that's a good question. If it wasn't for jump instructions, uh, could I use the EAP after crash for grading how far did it go? Correct. Uh, that being said, um, the jump instruction and uh, in place loops, which, you know, the rep something things, uh, that actually does make, uh, does make the counting how far did it go a little problematic. And my EAP might be like totally messed up at the point of crash too. But there should be a way to count them, I will, I will later look at, look at it. For example, maybe there is like RDTSC, like read timestamp counter, and maybe it tries to emulate it in some smart way. And that way maybe we could read the value. So I'll, I do try to do it again later on. Can't we do a static initial state so improvements in the code could be um, measurable? Uh, that is an excellent question. I might do that in a second, so that's, that's an excellent question. And good point too. Mm. Cool. But, uh, but yeah, in a second. So I'm going to, I guess, like do... I'm wondering how do I do like saving the state. Mm. Okay, let's do it like this. 22, do something special now. Okay, let's do it. Uh, state save and uh, nothing because it's a global variable and I'm a lousy coder. Uh, for as in top spec, which is a global variable with open. Oh, I would probably need the name. Name, write binary, do. I am going to be using constant size here, by the way. And 32 is a little small. I'm going to go 
to 64 in the end. Anyway, um, okay. So, um, yeah, write binary as f, and for each, actually, just. I wonder if I could do it in some JSON. So, yeah, this is something I actually don't know. Import JSON. How do I serialize a class in Python? Okay, um, and let's see what error is, is thrown. Hmm, what? Oh, because I didn't call it a uh, safe state initial. It says blah blah blah. Um, safe state cannot because default encoder encode object. Okay, JSON is not serializable. I know it's not serializable. Doesn't it want to code any special method? Ah, whatever. Let's just like do a do an ugly thing. So. Let's do this, yeah. Okay. Now, sorry, I wanted to check one other thing, but that's fine. F right, and I want to self code. Yeah, that's it, and load state. Open name. F. I'm not sure I need this, but never mind. Data is equal to mm, f read. This needs to be a constant. I wonder if this isn't too short, but whatever. We'll just regenerate it. Uh, for now. Okay, while i is less than length of d, I would like to s to be a spec with um, d from i to i plus code length as the data and uh, oh, my top spec here is actually going to be a new array. A new list, sorry, because it's a list in Python. So I do need the global ver append s and i plus equals code length. Okay, so now I could, I'm going to just like save the initial state. And self is not defined. Where did I write self? Okay, and it probably created the file which is like super random at this point. This is super random, perfect. And I'm going to comment this out, basically. And instead of this, I'm going to write mm, top spec equals to load state, but I, you know, I, I don't have to write it. State load initial. Okay, and now we can operate on this. Perfect. Now. I can do. Oh, I can do a um, dunder dict dunder. It seems for. I can use pickle too. Ah, uh, yes. I guess I could use pickle here. But I want a JSON actually for readability, right? And pickle is anything but readable. But it's not horrible either. It's basically like a text wrapper for it. But yeah, um, the gene that's uh, that's not a. Not not a bad suggestion actually. Though uh, for pickle for custom class, I would have to create the like wake up method anyway, so that wouldn't wouldn't change too much code anyway, I think. Okay, now the algorithm in the end. Um, I will have to do two more things. I will have to add uh, 
mutate here, a method mutate, which will do some mutations, which will be random. And that's in a second. And I will also have to figure out how to mix the specimen. Mix uh, spec one as a specimen B and pass, I need to do it in a second. And this will return a new specimen. Mm. Well, okay, I will code it now. For zip, no. A, B, and zip, S, A, S, B. That basically gives me the each byte in S and B. Let's maybe create a data here. And uh, these are, what is it? This is a string, right? Yeah, that's fine. I'm fine with it being a string, actually. I'm fine with this as well. So if random... I still import random, no I don't. This isn't the fastest way to do it. I don't I don't like this random here, but I don't want to overhack it anyway. But okay, let's do this. Um, this is actually inclusive on both sides, like from the zero to one means either zero or one. If it's equal to zero, then it's equal to one, then data append a otherwise it's probably i could write it in one line but whatever b and in the end i want to return a specimen which is initialized by data being joined together okay so this is this is a nice way to mix it i guess that's that's a pretty well i'm not sure if it's a nice way that's actually pretty hardcore way to mix genes, right? Because in the end our code is basically a gene, that's why I said it's maybe a little related to the spinning DNA in my background. Cool, and now mutate. I will implement mutate in a second. So what will I want the mutate to do? I will I will actually want the mutate to also I don't think it has to be No, it's fine. Just let it let it go. I'm going to start with a really horrible way. I might end up doing it properly in a second. I don't want to mutate it too much, so I this will I will need to add constants here. But if it's zero, then I want to XOR B with not XOR. Just overwrite it with a random. And int from 0 to 256 and. Hmm. Okay. And data append b and return. A new spec which is a new specimen specimen which is has data. Uh, thank you. Kshaku is right. This has to be 255. Okay, so I have mutate, mixing implemented. These are horrible. I will have to change them. Let's let's go with them at the beginning. Ten top specimens and now finally the actual algorithm. While I'm not bored, and I'm bored already, so I'm going to break out. Uh, because I, I, I will do, you know, the initial test run. Do first, um, let's create a new list of candidates. And then I'm going to get one I, no, I'm going to populate it with uh, x for x in. How do you copy in Python anyway? Verso, I know how to copy. You take top spec and you do this. And this is how you copy in Python, but that's just a shallow copy, it's not a deep copy. Um, looks a little like a spider, right? I think. Well, whatever. So for 
in uh, for uh, yeah, in range x range. I actually need x range here. How many? Let's say 100. I will have to measure the speed of this because I don't know how slow each iteration will be, and I don't want it to be too fast. I don't want it to be too slow either. Okay. Mm. And each candidate will get. I will choose. Uh, no, you know what? I'm going. No, that's fine. That's fine. I will append to it the a chosen specimen. So random choice. Choice chooses basically by random something from a list from the top specimens. And this will return me the specimen object and I will ask it to give me a mutation of itself. So mutate. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, and I will actually also supplement it with mixes of random stuff. So, but mixes from the candidates. So, um, copy yeah. candidates append. And now mix. I choose the first one from candidates copy. I don't want the new new ones to be chosen in this cycle. And another one. So two at random. It might be the same one by the way which is chosen, but that gives us only a, one more style of mutation, which is fine. And now I have 200 candidates. Some which are, yeah, I will play with this constants later on. And now I need to grade them. So, okay, uh, can we summarize because I'm getting lost. Okay, let's summarize. Uh, the function which I have uh, took most time to write is a function which grabs the code and executes this and checks whether something has been copied and the more bytes were copied, the more bytes are looking as expected, the better. And the more score it returns and it returns the score at the, at the end. Now, um, then I created a specimen which, uh, which is basically just a string holder, a class which is a wrapper for a string. And there are two functions were related to the genetic algorithm itself. One does a random mutation inside, hmm, this is too much anyway, uh, inside the string. And the other takes two strings and selects random bytes from each and puts it together into one string, which is, this isn't the greatest function to do this either, because this will, but, but yeah, we'll get into optimizing this code later on. And now I'm writing a loop where this is one um, generation of specimen, right? I start with some top specimen, which uh, mutate, basically have children which have a little mutated DNA. Well, clones, actually, not really children. And then I mix these children between themselves. Um, and both the parents and the children, I put it in a candidates array, and now I'm going to grade them. I'm going to run each candidate through the grading system, and I'm going to select top 10 candidates. So yeah, now I need to grade them. So for C in candidates, the run grade, Great, and uh, it's spec, no, that's c.code. And um, yeah, I need to do a couple of tests. I guess I will start with like just copying the alphabet. Is it 26 letters? It's 26 characters, perfect. So this is the first test. The second test is going to be the letter A times 100. And I'm going to add the score, actually. Yeah. This is how I'm going to score them. And now I need something for the results. So hmm. okay, results append. I'm going to put the score and the candidate. Okay. 
And now the top specimen, I need to sort this. Um, how do you sort in Python? Python sort tuple by k first. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Sorted results key is equal to lambda x where x is zero because this is where I keep my score. Cool. And I'm grabbing my next top spec will be the I could actually I don't need to copy it here if I'm doing this. Well, let's do this. Yeah, uh, these are just like the top results basically, but I, which, where is it? Print results, let's just print it and see. It's going to probably fail horribly. Okay, perfect, uh, already an error. Line 88. Blah, 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 join data. And what do you not like about it? Int found, what? Data B er, CHR. I I remembered I should put it here and then I forgot. Now okay, this is weird. Oh, because I give it a specimens, uh, sorry my bad. Should be code and code. Okay. And this is good. Okay. So it's actually quite fast because it already rated everything which is quite good now is there any difference with so many no i don't i don't know how it's sorted probably the top 10 are at the bottom i don't know i'm going to increase this and i'm going to increase this let's just see i'm actually counting that some at least one place will generate a c3 at the beginning and that will actually make it um, yeah that will actually make it get the extra bonus points for not crashing but that is not the case always returns the same amount because everything is crashing right now probably maybe the last one no, even not the last one. Oh, come on. I'm pretty sure. Like, just generate me a C3 at the beginning and get extra points for that. Yeah, my girlfriend is probably terrible. Okay, so it sorts in this order. Therefore, I need to take the last 10. How do I grab the last 10? It's minus 10. This is the last 10. And this will be my uh, new top spec. Perfect. And I will only print the top spec where the top spec I actually only care about. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. no. I need to. Uh, this isn't, but that's not correct. For C and so that's score and yeah, now that's good. Do top spec is can you like okay? I I because it's a tuple, right? Of the score and actually the specimen, but I well the candidate. And I need to under, uh, append the candidate, but I want to display this and yeah, let's see now. Okay, and these are the grades, and the grades are terrible, and for some reason I have a mistake somewhere, probably. Uh, sort it doesn't sort in place. Uh, yeah, it doesn't sort in place, thank you. Results equals to. Hmm. Okay, yeah, 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 now it's getting, it's getting some bonuses. Like this is the eight here, so that's, uh, that's something. Yeah, and now let's see what happens. I'm going to just let it run. And let's see if the score gets better at any... Yeah, it gets better. So it starts to copy something. Then, then it... Why, why do we have... The score is getting better. Oh, because this isn't sorted. No. That's weird. I, I have a mistake somewhere. Because 
this should never downgrade into this, and I know what's the problem. The problem is, is this the problem? <laughs> it's pretty weird, because why do, it always should get better, it should never get worse, and it does get, get worse. Okay. Now, I'm going to, to code, before I look for the bug, I'm going to code one more thing. And that one more thing is actually, I'm going to code um, something which dumps the state, each state. But apart from only dumping the state, it also dumps the disassembly of each of the top candidates, of the top specimen. So we can actually take a look, like, what is the code which is being generated, because that's the most fun in it. There are like a lot of questions, so, so let's see. Did I miss some theory at the beginning? What is the difference between brute force and genetic programming? Um, so the difference is that in brute force, you only have like one generation, a generation where you mix stuff, but when you mutate stuff, but in genetic programming, you actually uh, have a method of grading the intermediary results so that uh, you grab only the best ones and then you um, mix them and mutate them and so on. So it's basically like gets better and better. It's, a, it's like brute force, but it's a little smarter than a brute force, basically. Um, if a score function doesn't describe smoothly curved surface, uh, then we are basically randoming solutions without any help from genetic algorithm. Smooth. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what you mean. Well, I kind of get what you mean, but we'll get to optimization later. Mm. Okay, we can do that. I'm, I'm looking for the question, sorry. In mix function, I could actually... Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know you could do that. Um, let me show you the question. And I'm going to actually try it out because it looks fun. So random choice. What happens if I give it two things? Like two iterable things. No. Wait, maybe I have a mistake. In the mix function. Oh, you mean that? Uh, yeah, I think you're right. That's that's a better way to do it. So let's do that. I actually thought you were thinking about a different thing, but that doesn't matter. You're correct. Random choice AB. Yeah. It's that's a cleaner way to do it. Okay, sort it doesn't sort in place. Thank you for kill. And then, uh -huh. oh, if I do add wrapper or string for better printing. Mm, that's not a bad idea. Let's do just that. So, def, let's start with wrap. Uh, so, return self code and def then um, I might change it later on return self code okay do you retain the candidates from the last round so they should be here right because I initialize candidates with the top specimen then I append only to this array, then I append to this array more, then I grade everything, so each candidate should be graded, including the candidates which already have been graded previously. Then I sort them by the score, and the score of the grade should be identical, hopefully. And then I copy the best, but we'll get to that in a second, to this, uh, this debugging. It's a good question, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So what I wanted to do is I wanted to, mm, I guess I'm going to go with this, uh, this, now uh, I'll just write a function which is like this, this awesome, this awesome, okay. Self and it will generate the disassembly, which I already implemented here, so this will actually be actually be easy. Okay, and I start. Oh, I don't need to read. I know where my code is. My code is in self code. Here we go. And the EIP is zero actually, but let's just go with mem code. And then. I think that's the correct way to do it. Let's just print it and see what happens. So here print this and uh, s l c this awesome. Okay. Let's see and and then break and see where this leads us. Here we go. No. Choice takes to uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I forgot the square brackets. Just the next right here. Yeah. Here we go. My bad. No. Um, Address is not correct, bar. Oh come on. Offset then. I don't want to enable details, but slow. Okay, name and up count. Where's the address? Where's the size and the address? Oh, it's address, not out. I ADDR. It's address. Here we go. Okay. Cool, uh, I don't need that break here, obviously. So it does print how the code looks like, but this is, this is pretty, pretty boring for us, I would say. Why did it, I don't get this. Did it just crash at the beginning? It probably just crashed at the beginning. Cool, we could actually stop the disassembly at the return, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, let's save it to a string and then save it to a file. So here, output, and, and okay. Because I don't want to review it now, I'd prefer to review it as we go. We do need to get like generation level. So gen, let's just call it gen, and I'm going to increase it each time. Okay, and now I grab the score. So I'm going to print, uh, no, I'm going to write it down. So with open, I created a directory called res and here I'm going to put the generation in this format dot txt um, write as f and I want to save it uh, the score so f write the score which is uh, s I will print it because I want to print it too and then I write the disassembly and I'm going to add another 
this and let's see if this works. Okay, now we go to basically list the result directory and I did the same mistake I'm doing always. I'm seriously doing always the same mistake. Uh, okay, and we get a file which is somewhat large, but we are quite happy with it. Cool. Why doesn't, oh, I guess it like doesn't correctly disassemble any, any instruction. So this looks pretty, pretty fine. And now let's start, let's run it and see what happens and we will be able to debug it a little better. Okay, let's give it, give it some time. So it copies something and then crashes, I guess. You know what, I'm going to change one thing, but well, I, I'll do that in a second. I sti still don't know why does it have uh, regressions. Now it's stopped crashing, I guess. I, I don't like I don't like the idea that we get give it so many points for start for not crashing, so let's just let's just do this. Okay. I stopped it but I am going to look at some code. So let's look here. What do we have here? Oh that's actually an instruction which copies a D word. And it copies a D word from here to here. Then it increases ECX and it copies a byte from here to here. We're getting somewhere. And then it jumps if it's greater here. So that's not bad, actually. Yeah, that's not bad. But this is still copying just four bytes. So, and this is somewhat random. Well, we expected random stuff, so. Okay, I'm going to remove the results and I'm going to run it again. And then I'm going to look for the bug, basically. Why it? Why do we have the regressions? Uh, yeah, and we we have a regression here. Mm, you know what? I'm going to change one more thing. I'm actually going to make the score based only on one run for now, because I I'm not sure about this. So let's do this. Let's do only one score. And okay, the rest is fine. Okay, it's a little faster too. So we can see when it started correctly copying the four bytes. But it still has the regression, it shouldn't have the regression. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Let's see what it generated, by the way, because there, that was... Okay. So this is copying. So it says it's copying... This is weird. Does move SD actually increment this? I think it does. I think it does increment it. So just getting this one single instruction randomly, it does already copy eight bytes. That's fine. I'm not sure if our function actually works correctly though. You know what, I'm going to change one more thing in the scoring uh, at random. I'm not going to compare the padding in the end. I decided against it. I decided I will only yeah, then test, but test will never get the padding. The padding will be added only here. Okay. Now we, okay. Now uh, the score will be a little smaller now. Okay, that's a little better. Yeah. Let's just, let's take a look here, like what happened. Oh, I actually know what I need to print out the generation number because I don't know at which, which file to inspect. So print here, print again. Print again, comma. Okay. 
that went pretty cool. It might be before because of the way I'm sorting, I guess. But let's see what happened here. So generation 0373. Here we go. This has score of nine, but we are interested in this. This is it jumps to memory, which is not executable. How did, oh, but only if it's below. So this isn't executed. Then it exchanges so something, does something. And does a leaf. I don't know how this doesn't crash, but okay. Seriously, how did it get so many points? I have an error somewhere. I'm not doing something correctly somewhere in the grading. Um, I'm, I'm guessing there is something wrong with my code emulation that basically there is a leak between two, two things. Uh, let's see what happens if I like totally recreate the, the, whole, mm, the whole emulator each, each time, if this is the same behavior we are observing. This will be slow probably, but let's see what happens. Okay, so there are no regressions now. So there is a, the code doesn't want to be run many times it seems. Okay. Uh, all right, 26 is by the way the max. It will not be able to copy more. So, but this isn't. Yeah, so this is pretty weird. How it, how does it get 26 with this? It, it actually behaves like I wouldn't, like, I don't get this code. <laughs> Maybe I'm not printing code because um, I understand that this prefixed with a rep instruction would copy everything. I totally get that. There is no prefix here. Perhaps my disassembler is lying to me. That might be the case that the disassembler is actually not showing the rep prefix and all this boils down to there being a rep prefix. So, uh, dear disassembler, do you display the prefixes? Where is my disassembler? Do I have sys imported? Obviously not. And prefix. There's the instruction name, which I'm not using. Let's see what this is. And okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we need to try it out because this is so. Let's do it like this. I'm going to additionally dump the the state. So this is fine. This is fine. And now dump the state. So state dump. And the name is going to be the same, but the dot bin, because the state has a really nice format. So, okay. Okay, and we reach suddenly 26. This is 68. And I'm going to open it in IDA 32 bit.
And this is fine, just convert it to code from here. Uh, this is a prefix, so this can be ignored. Move as B. Um, the next code is going to be at four here. Why doesn't this crash? I don't know, but okay. Now there is no, there is, oh, here's the move. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. And let's see what the corresponding text file says. The corresponding text file just failed to to disassemble anything because I probably commented it out by accident. <laughs> no, I didn't comment out, it's here. It seems with this assembler which I'm using doesn't really like the log prefix, but okay, that's fine. So yeah, um, I'm guessing this is actually that the code reaches this point and then it copies uh, everything. And uh, this is, yeah, th this is a proper mem copy. Assuming that I have everything in the proper registers, this is a proper mem copy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually be a little mean to the code because it does reach the proper mem copy, but I wanted to copy, well, byte by byte and also, or like increment stuff, not to use this unless it figures out what registers to set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the registers where it puts stuff into. I'm not going to use the same registers which I've been using so far. Instead, I'm going to use uh, this register. This is going to be zero. This is going to be zero to this register. And uh, this is going to be zero and this register. And this makes it not possible to directly use the rep move sb instruction, which would do the copy. Cool. Now, let's see what happens. And uh, I'm going to make again this. Okay, now it's a little harder, isn't it? I'm going to let it run for us for a while. Let's see if it actually hits. If it hits one instruction which does the copying, and no, it needs to. Where's the boundary which I've I've written? And the boundary here is actually copying one byte and incrementing. If it gets there, that's fine. Okay, probably two little cases. So let's increase the number of cases. <laughs> yeah, and here we go. Something is happening. Okay, it's generating some code and it reached 26, which is the maximum number. So by the way, do, I think I have the console font a little small. No, it's the normal one. Oh, yeah, never mind. I put the front was small. So yeah, uh, let's see what c what kind of code it actually reached. So this is the code which actually does the copying. Let's see what kind of code did it do. So, and it claims that this code actually copies 26 bytes. It's not a full mem copy yet because in mem copy, it should copy an arbitrary amount of bytes and not only 26, but here's it's copying 26 bytes. That's, that's the start. So it pushes EAX, then it switches EAX with EDI. Oh, and that, that's why it can use these instructions later on. When it increases ESP by one, which basically bre breaks the stack totally. And then it copies the one byte here, four bytes here, four bytes here. When it pushes something onto the stack, then it does whatever with ABP, which doesn't really matter, whatever with this. And then it jumps here, uh, no, sorry, here, which is how, how does it work? It doesn't increment. Oh, I guess MoveSB actually increments EDI anyway by itself. Yeah, I, I think MoveSD actually increments EDI and ESI by four. 
so yeah, um, this is basically a loop, a for loop which uh, which operates here. This is fine. Yeah, this is a a nice mem copy. This is a mem copy actually, but it doesn't not an arbitrary one. Let's look at other variants. I don't know. It is basically everything the same is the same, right? Just uh, just variants of it. Here it actually jumps like one instruction above, which is one byte above, which is rather funny. And it, it should crash on this. And normally you do crash on this, but yeah. Um, so this looks fun. I actually would like to see this iteration as well, the five iteration. So the five iteration, what was the jump between these two? So nine was already, nine wasn't doing the loop or was it? No, it wasn't doing the loop. It was just copying some bytes and then, and then some more bytes, but it wasn't doing any loop. This loop ju jumps somewhere there. And here we get, we get a loop. So this is the, basically the big step it made. Cool, but now let's do let's do additional tests. Let's actually tell it, okay, so you can copy these many bytes. So try to copy this many bytes, and um, if you can copy both this and this, then 100 is maybe too much. Let's do 50. Let's do. No, that's fine. Let's leave it at this, and let's run it and let's see if it. You know what, I'm actually going to also, I'm going to score it now for the not crashing. So I'm going to add this else here, but I'm going to add quite a lot of score, 4096, to mot motivate it in a evolutionary way, basically not to, not to crash. And let's see what happens now. Then we can also ask it to generate the smallest code possible. Okay, so we got already code which doesn't crash. This is basically if it's 8000 at the beginning, it means it doesn't crash. But not crashing is uh, not enough to... Uh... No, you know what? I'm going to change a little the way it works. Uh, because it gets too many... It focuses on not crashing and I don't like it. Well, no, but that's not really the true. You know what? I'm going to do add it one point for not crashing, but... Uh, 10 points for each for each uh, byte it gets correctly. Mm, two. Yeah, two times it didn't crash, which is fine. So we have... How come it didn't crash here? Well, what's the emulator's fault, actually? It reaches red, which is fine. Yeah. Are there any comments, questions? Uh, by the way, I'm going to publish the code on my GitHub anyway, so you can play with it, probably get better results from me. When coding such code, usually it's about tweaking the numbers which you are using there. If we provide grade rules to this uh, genetic programming, shouldn't it be called programming by giving advices in grade function? I I wouldn't say so because we don't really provide the grade to it. It just we just pick the best specimens, but the specimens and the way it is generated doesn't really care about the grade. Mm. How about infinite loops? Uh, we have this uh, this thing here, like, but it won't execute more than this amount of instructions, so I'm not worried about infinite loops. So no, the, the regression, I think the regression is because I'm not reinitializing something in the emulator, or the emulator itself is it's not reinitializing itself. So it, it seems to be a harder problem this time. The problem here is that 
the yeah it basically we have a steep bar which the random function needs to pass the random function needs to be able to find at least one one instruction which copies something be, before it uh, and not, not one instruction only because of the way it is in the registers it it has to mutate several bytes in the correct way to be able to 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 basically get the code correctly so i guess one thing we could do is we could hint it actually in the initial state we could add a candidate which is able to copy one byte oh <laughs> whoa what happened here okay okay i am um, so it did randomly arrive at the solution we don't have to hint it after all it is surprising I actually honestly thought we will have to hint it. Let's see, that was uh, generation number 38. And I'm going to see in generation number 38 what happened, what was the lucky breakthrough. And uh, the lucky breakthrough, generation 28, was exchange uh, EAX and ECI. And um, yeah, I'm going to run a better, a better disassembler now. Okay, uh, and fine, and we have to go to basically the last 40 bytes, so that would be, this is 80 to 140, it will be here, yeah, here we go, this is something which uh, the emulator doesn't crash on, the emulator actually copies some byte, and then it goes here, I'm not, I'm not sure, probably no. No. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on there. Yes, I is still set to the source address. Is it still set to the source address? Uh, it is, that's true. Yeah, um, we, we might reset it. Let's reset it in a second. I'm going to give it still. Um. Oh, because I changed this, that doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad. Mm, you are correct, this. But let's see what code is generates be before I fix it. So, okay, and it goes to this amount. I think this is the full amount. So let's see what code it actually created. And that's generation 67. What do we have here? It loads whatever this is into the stack pointer. Then it exchanges it. Ah, okay. And then it goes here. Yeah, yeah, I see what you did there. And then it goes there while it's greater or equal. So I guess this also would decrement the ECX. By no, would it? Maybe this is never executed. Maybe this is executed. No, this probably is not. How does this not crash? Because we have the address. No, this should crash. The, the emulator here is playing tricks on me. Um, yeah, I, I totally don't believe this doesn't crash. Oh, no, it does, it does crash because there's no two here. So I shouldn't have stopped it. I should have forced it to actually arrive at the code, which doesn't crash. Well, whatever. So uh, let's fix the bug and run it again. I'm quite happy that it actually gets some results. Yeah, this should be IP. This doesn't matter because actually um, this, we set EIP here again in emo start. So yeah, uh, this is oblig sorry optional. Output address in nibx now is fine. Try it again, and we're not hinting you this time. Uh, we could only reward not crashing if score is above zero. Uh, that's actually an excellent idea. 
written from Vax uh, Vax V A K Z Z. I'm sorry. I'm I'm terrible with nicknames. So um, as well like this. No crash score is equal to zero. Otherwise, no crash score is equal to one. If score is above zero, then we we give it the no crash score. Anyway. Hmm. Yeah, this is because the the crash score might the no crash score might actually block it, and it would be harder for it to to generate any copying. Okay, it already copies something. Let's see what it has. Mm, the disassembler is useless. Yeah, I'm saying it's useless because it doesn't really disassemble too much. It seems there are like instructions which are probably like not even defined in the disassembler, but the um, the the emulator is quite happy with them and doesn't care about them. So uh, so yeah, this is a little problematic because we cannot really inspect it. Oh, it stopped crashing. That's fine. Mm, do you want to disassemble? Yes, please. And show me what you have. Uh, please undefined this and go with this. Is this like a transactional thingy? Yeah, I'm not really sure how it copies anything. Oh, you know what? Here. Mm. I think this is like there's some random byte in AH which put to no but EDI doesn't hold the destination address anymore. So this doesn't make sense. Why is this scored in any way? I don't know. Mm. Yeah, now I'm kinda not happy that I, I'm actually using an emulator and not a real not a real system. On a real system it would probably be a little a little easier. Mm, so one of the problems is currently that it it's kinda stuck and the reason it's kinda stuck is because all the all the children are probably either identical or really similar and that doesn't when mixing and mutating, this doesn't give them to good results. You should. That's why it's good to have a population as uh, with like genetic diversity, right? Which we are not doing here. And we got stuck because my algorithm implementation is flawed. I'm going to restart it. Okay, um, and I'm going to, in the meantime, add code which actually hints it, like gives it like an example code which actually copies one instruction, uh, one byte, sorry. I'm going to import keystone. Keystone is an assembler. So keystone here. And that KS, uh, uh, it's created by the same author, which uh, like, I'm not going to try to even say the person's name, mm, but yeah. Still, the offer of these three tools, thank you for creating them. And I'm going to here in the initial state. Where's the initial state? I'm actually going to add another specimen, which is spec and code. Yeah, perfect. Now, the code is something, and the code is code which is L just with. Uh, zeros to um, what, whatever is the code length. This means just like add the padding with zeros to up to the code length. 
And here I'm going to do ks dot uh, asm and the code is going to go here with zero at the, as the address and it returns a couple of things. I don't remember what it returns, so let's just do this print and let's do that here and sys exit because I don't want anything else. Okay, so let's see if this if this population is any better. Um, 10 or 20, 24, 26. Yeah, I'm not sure. What does it give points for? Okay, let's uh, let's just stop it and restart our experiment. But first, okay, so this is fine now. Mm, can I do this like in three? Yeah, I can. Perfect. I just need to change the code. I need to grab the first one of it, sorry, code, and change it to byte array, and change this to string. And this should be, this should give me <laughs> basically the same as, let's see if this works. Uh, this isn't correct though, uh, this should be mem code. Okay, yes, it's good. So, I can remove this, I can add this now. Um, sorry, where did we put, in which arguments did I put it? AEX is output, ABX is input, and uh, yeah, that's fine. So, uh, move A S E a D word from ABX, AB, sorry, ABX was input, right? Yeah, ABX was input. No, I want a byte. I don't want to hint it too much. Byte and put it into which our register is not used. C ACX, so CL. I want to put byte in CL and then I want to put that byte in AAX and return. No, I don't want to return. I want to crash. Entry. Uh, an integer is required, but uh, sorry, that's my bad. I mixed the order of arguments and I had the type. So yeah, that's bad. No, okay. I thought it hanged. Why? Why zero? I'm pretty sure I'm copying one byte. Something is wrong with my emulator, or with my. My code, probably not the emulator's code, my code. Address in EBX, address out EAX. How did I do? Address in, address out, crash. This is then added as a specimen code here. And then after inside it here, Pretty sure it does copy one byte. It should get at least score of ten. I'm wondering if it's a problem, but in top spec I have eleven now, but it shouldn't be. Oh well, one thing is that this random choice in one thousand iteration never actually grabs my. No, but that, that will not happen. I probably should also change the mixing and this together. And I have it here. So that's fine. It should grade it. No, seriously. Print, grade, code. And that's it. Okay. And sys exit. Because I should get a score of 10 here. And I get a score of 0. Why do I get a score of 0? Well, okay. 
So this actually shows me that he didn't copy anything. I put the code here. Mm -hmm. I'm not... I'm not doing anything wrong with the registers. What is the... What is the register state here? I would love to know. So print... I want to know what's in CL, for example. Because CL is where I copied my... X86, CL, well, ECX is fine as well. Okay, let's do it again. And it's zero. Why is it zero? I'm copying into CL a byte from EBX. This at alone should... Yeah, I probably have some like really, really lame bag. Um, and I'm actually positive that what's in my EBX register in that case. In my EBX register, there is 100,000 in the output. I read it this. No, no, no. No, I think I know what's the bug. And I don't like it. You know what's the bug? I never actually <laughs> put the test in the memory. Hmm. Yeah. No, wait, wait, wait. I am posting it because it's in the input. And... Uh, oh, wait. Address in is in e EBX. I'm just, so this is the mem input, right? Address in. It should be the same thing, but shouldn't matter. Yeah. And I'm not resetting it anywhere here. And again, I'm, I'm actually grabbing the output memory here and I'm grabbing the test here, but you know what, I'm going to do a nasty trick. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to grab from the address in. Okay. Um, okay, I guess there are some hints from you, folks. So let's see if you actually found the bug. If I didn't miss anything, ESI is still set to source address. Yes, Sebastian, you're right. I did fix that some time ago, but you are correct. That was the problem. Um, could only reward if not crashing, but I did... Uh, also, uh, oh, sorry, you don't see the questions. Here we go. I also implemented this one already. Then we could reward the most golfed code. Yes, uh, I might want to get to this point uh, uh, in a second. Check the exception. Um, no exception at this point, sadly. I would welcome an exception which would say, yeah you actually just like forget this okay let's run this again now my input memory is fine my test actually let's, let's just double check it let's do this yeah that's fine so this is fine then it's just like my output memory it's actually there's nothing there yeah there are only zeros um, did I, and I'm running my code, right? So I'm running this code. So if I run int3, this, I don't like it. Am I running this code? Is it really the code I'm running? Because it should crash. There should be an exception. No. Well, this is, this does look fine. Uh, we might want to disassemble this code in a second, just to double check. Uh. Um. Wait, what happened to these two lines? They are not here. This is int3 and this is red. I would prefer to have all my code there. Where is the rest of my code? Print code. Hmm. 
Uh, really? Does this make it happy? Yes, this makes it happy. Mm. Okay, so this is fine. Uh, this is fine as well. Okay. Because it actually returns a tuple of some things and well, you can see here, of length and the amount. Okay, now it's... It looks a little better. It doesn't work better, but it looks a little better. I'm going to do this thing now. I'm going to actually do Python x equals this. Open test bin right binary and I'm going to put x there and now I'm going to use another disassembler dash b32 test bin and yeah that's fine that code looks correct okay so now I can remove this and run it again and I get okay perfect okay now it starts to work so we're getting somewhere so I can remove this, remove this. Does it print anything? No, it doesn't. Perfect. Let's let's. Wow, 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 wow. I knew there was another print of some more. Mm. I should call today's live stream like print after bugging. Uh, still, no, wait, no, 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 no. Here. Okay. Twenty-two. Okay, that means it copies two characters, by the way, and doesn't crash. Which is, by the way, the initial code, right? Is my initial code. Hmm. And then it fell back to the 50 which is some form of magical number, it seems, for my genetic code. I have no idea why it, why it likes the 50 so much, because the code it generates actually does nothing. Yeah, let's see. Uh, so this is my code, right? Ah, I, kn I know what's the problem with my algorithm. So my algorithm is stupid. The mixing shouldn't be done in the way I'm doing the mixing, uh, because hinting doesn't work in the way I'm doing the mixing. Uh, the mixing should be like, yeah, grab this, and then grab a piece of this, and a piece of that, and th that should be how the mixing should be done. No, I'm going to change it. Hmm. So, how do I do the mixing? Um, I'm going to do it like this. The lang. I'm going to use one of these as a base. So, byte array sa code. This is going to be my base. Now, I'm going to grab a piece of sb. of the size random rand int from anything from 1 to 8 bytes and I'm going to do to place this uh, oh I'm going to grab it from a random location so location is going to be also random rand int from 1 to from 0 actually to 31 yeah that makes sense now the chunk which I'm going to get is going to be from SB code starting from the location up to this many bytes. And I need to select a different location where I'm going to copy it. And this is the key part here which I missed. 
So this is the destination location and the destination location, this is fine. And now I need to put it there. So this is actually supposed to be a byte array as well. So byte array from the destination to up to size, I guess. I do put uh, the chunk there, which is, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. which is fine. Now the data has to be at most code length length. And uh, now, no, not join, just do a string from it, string data. No, that's fine. This kind of mixing is way better because yeah, previously the problem was that previously I basically uh, what I did, right, was I took, uh, like if I had one specimen and the other specimen, I took, for example, this byte from here, this byte from here, this byte from here, this byte, and this byte, and this byte. Now the problem here is that if I wanted to hint it, right, uh, and tell it that, oh, actually this sequence is cool, it would only ever take the sequence and put it at the beginning. And that's not good. What I wanted it to do is like grab this sequence, put it somewhere else and like figure out what to put here. And by figure out, I mean randomize out, obviously, because this is genetic programming, it's about randomness. So this is the new algorithm. It basically like grab a piece from somewhere and put it somewhere else and let's see what happens, right? And the piece might be actually in several places and that's, uh, that's totally fine. Um, it will be in several places as after a couple of uh, um, generations. So, run it again. Mm, 22. 22 is the default value based on my random code. And I seriously have a, a bug somewhere. This 50 should not appear here. Especially that this isn't really telling me too much. But I'm going to let it run for a while. Uh, you know what? No. I, w I was thinking about actually printing out the exception, which, which it tells me to, at least for the top species. But no, it was fine. Anyway, I'm going to probably be finishing the live stream in a couple of minutes, so I'll go through questions now. And uh, yeah, because, oh, it, it went to 80, that's not bad. Mm, but I still cannot see the code, I can see this. Oh, this is funny, it crashes in some cases, but it doesn't crash in other cases. That's what the one at the end says there. Yeah, and I, maybe I'll let it run and I'll um, tell you later what was the result. But I think I have a mistake somewhere in my code still. Because it should, it should be a little, the results should be a little better. While obviously they are not. And uh, yeah, I don't, I blame it also on the emulator. I'm going to double check once again that I actually zero the output page. Yeah, I do zero it. And my zero is actually this amount and my output is actually this size. This is fine. Hmm. Let me grab, let's see what, if I can disassemble any of the code which is currently there. Well, Ida has problems really with, with disassembling this. Do I have it running in 32-bit mode as I think I have it? This running can, uh, this doesn't matter. This is, this is fine. I think it's the, the same value for the macros. Um, okay, is line 73 okay from ABC? Line 73. Let's see what's happening here. I'm reading from the test, uh, from the input my no, whatever for the length of test is there yes it looks okay it's a little slow i could just use like comment it out and it didn't get it from memory but it should be fine and i'm basing it i'm saying it's fine because i first put it i write it here right i put it here into memory 
So, and then I just get it out. So this is fine. And the memory is read only, so it shouldn't shouldn't be affected in any way. This basically says that it's read only. And I do put it in address in, and address in is memory input, so this is fine. Uh, please summarize how the grading function works. Okay, so the grading function currently allows the code to run until it crashes or exits. If it uh, doesn't crash, then I add, then I put one in no crash score, otherwise it's zero, but uh, I don't do anything with it yet. Then I get the output memory, I get only the test length of, worth of data. So for the alphabet test, I get 26 bytes. And then for the input, uh, sorry, for the thing to compare it to, I get the data from the input, which is done here. Uh, also up to test length uh, test data. I convert both to strings because they're actually byte arrays. And then I zip it. Um, and zip basically means that it's going to create like uh, it's going to create a generator which returns each time one element from one and and one element from the other and the next element from one and next element from the other. So I get one element from M out here and one from test here. I check if they are the same, identical, and if they are, I increase the score by ten. If the score is more than zero, I do add information. Well one point if it didn't crash. And I return. And in the end, when I, um, I basically for each candidate, I do two tests, one of copying 50A and one of copying the alphabet with the same code from the candidate. And I add the results here. So basically, I add the score here, and this is obviously the different score than one. Above this is not a global variable. And ever, even if it was, I would just overwrite it here anyway. And by, then I sort it using the score as the key. Right, the score, the score is here, so yeah, the score as the key. And I get, get it sorted, and I grab the last 10, as in 10 best specimen. And I add them to top specimens. I append this C, which is fine. And I save it and do other stuff here. And then I restart. When I restart, I put the specimens in the candidate list. I append random, randomly mutated candidates from the same list here. Uh, <laughs> is this correct? No, it's not correct. I'm making a mistake here, but this shouldn't matter too much. It should be I, I should be making the copy here because otherwise this is like the same array actually, and this would be able to pick the newly added candidate. But that doesn't change too much. Mm. Then I do a copy of whatever I created, and I do a mix between. I'm starting to mix the candidates, which I'm doing both from the candidate copy, which is fine. And then here, I guess I'm getting, uh, it's still 81. Here I'm getting, um, yeah, and here we already discussed this. I'm basically grading all the candidates. And I did increase this and this decrease, well, increases the amount of time it takes, therefore it means that I'm actually correctly adding and this is uh, incrementing in fact. So that means um, the next steps which I should take right now would be, first of all, I should play with a mutation function. This isn't too great. It, maybe it would be better to mutate less bytes than, this is basically every every third byte, mutate, no, no, sorry, mutate three bytes, and in, in the code, mutate three bytes. Maybe I should, would be, go better with bit flipping, maybe I could increment, like, increment this, change it to five, or maybe change it to 10, mm, uh, sorry, uh, change it to 20, and see what happens. Mm. Okay. 
so this is yeah basically tweaking this code tweaking this code is the next thing i would do um probably changing the order of this first do the mixes then do the mutations though yeah it would, might probably make sense to to change the order of it and and yeah so i'm going to keep probably i'm going to play later on a little bit and the goal is basically to generate a mem copy function which copies memory and it seems to copy eight characters well actually four characters each time i cannot verify it because the disassembler which i'm using cannot disassemble the code which it generates which is already means that we have more success we had more success today with fuzzing than ge genetic fuzzing than genetic coding um yeah i think that's uh, that's about it so i'm going to finish it here if you wa want to play with this code i'm going to upload it to my github if you um otherwise i'm probably going to play a little with it and record a vlog about uh, a video log about the results if i manage to get it to work and that's it so thank you very much kshaku for um being the moderator today thank you for everyone uh, to come i hope you learned something even though we didn't actually reach a working bam copy function but as, as i said at the beginning this might not work so yeah kind of expected there will be no live stream next week and there will be one in two weeks um so yeah uh, i guess that's it for today if you have any comments then just leave them in the in the video uh, description and uh, by the way we already have the topic for the live stream in three in two weeks and that's going to be let me do a quick check on our calendar mm. okay back to the basics xss yeah i will basically show how to exploit xss so i guess web security um that will happen in two weeks so that's it i'm going to leave you with some music and and yeah, um and that's it and there's a comment oh no mission yeah there's no mission today sorry just didn't have a time to to do it i actually need to create some missions for in advance bef because doing it before the stream doesn't really work out recently yeah mm. okay see you next time and and then happy hacking